Hello everyone and welcome back to Just Finish Coding. I'm Sriram and this video is part 11 of our Geometry Dash game on Scratch 3. Now on parts 1 to 10 we did quite a bit of code and in case you've not checked out those videos, I will leave a card for you right here. So in this video we'll be completing the special coin and we'll also be fixing a lot of bugs that we have as of now. So let's get right into it. Before I get to the special coin, I'm gonna fix the bugs. And the first main one is in the flying change. So here, uh, I'm not entirely sure why I forgot to do this, but in case you have it just like this, you'll have a whole bunch of errors because we're not deleting the clones at the beginning. Now, since we're not deleting the clones at the beginning, we're gonna have multiple clones created when we are you know, restarting the level. And if that is the case, that could have pretty disastrous effects right here. Because instead of applying just once, we'd be going through this entire thing twice because two different clones are going to touch the player and we'll be switching variables twice, we'll be changing background color by one twice and instead of touching, uh, instead of switching the mode from ground to flying or from flying to ground, we'll be doing the opposite, right? We'll be switching it from ground to flying and then back to ground. So this is going to be a complete mess and you can fix this pretty easily. So head over to control, grab, or repeat or one and just put in or delete this clone inside that. Now once you have this in place, you can put it above the hide and that's it. You can call it uh, a day for this sprite um, with pretty much it. Um, next we can head over to the player because at this point, you know, the explosion kind of looks pretty awkward. I mean, when he does touch, the, um, touch one of those spikes, um, the friction still shows and uh, the player doesn't really hide. So we can fix this quite easily. Uh, you can head over to events, grab a when I receive player death, simply hide and that's it. The player is automatically gonna hide. Um, we can also do this for both the player particles as well as the flying particles so that they obey pretty much the same thing that the player is uh, doing. So we can test this out very quickly. Now when we hit the green flag, boom, everything explodes nicely and the game restarts. Cool. So next we can get into the special coins, which is the whole purpose, right? So within the special coins, um, I'm going to quickly make sure that we also uh, delete the clone here because I forgot to do this. So head over to um, head over to the uh, head over right within init. Say repeat um, not two, but repeat one. Uh, delete this clone and put the hide back on. Um, basically here I will be making sure that whenever the player touches this coin it's going to go up in a nice little fading animation and we also um, pretty much bump up our score by 50 points right. So the idea is the player chooses a harder path to get to the coin so that he can get a higher score. So that's what we're trying to do here. And to do that, we're gonna need two different variables. Uh, the first one is fairly easy to comprehend. It's called touched. It's going to be a Boolean variable for the sprite only. Basically, this sprite tells us whether the coin has touched the player or not. In case it's touched the player, then we can complete the coin animation. And in case it's not touched the player, this variable is going to be set to no, and it's going to remain stationary. So click OK. Let's hide that variable. Um, the second variable is called max y. And this variable is going to control how high the object can go relative to the y position. So you can click OK once again. Um, uh, by the way, set it for the uh, set it for this sprite only. So now uh, we can start with a when uh, when I start as a clone. And uh, here, the first thing I will do is to clear all the graphic effects. And the reason for this is because we'll be applying the ghost effect later on. And it's important that all the clones, when they are uh, created first, do not have any ghost effect on them. So now we can set max y. So uh, I want the um, I want the coin to you know move up neatly for eight different ticks, and I'm going to move up by ten pixels each time. So since I'm moving up by eight ticks, I'm going to set max y to be whatever the y position is plus seventy nine. And you may think, well, eight times ten is eighty. Why don't I set it to be eighty? And the reason I'm not doing that is because in case I do set it to be eighty, if I check if the y position is greater than max y. Uh, and I increase the Y position 8 times 10, right, 80. Uh, it's going to check if uh, 80 is greater than 80. 
and that's going to return false, right? So it's going to do it once more. And then Y position is going to get to 90, which is more than what I need, right? So I need to make sure that this is a little bit less than 80. So even 79.99999 would do or just 71 or just 70, right? It's going to have the same effect, but 79 works for me. So I'm going to go ahead with it. So next we can get into this uh, when we receive tick and you can grab an if else. So this is where we'll be separating the two things. So we can check first if touched is equal to no. In case it is equal to no, we will go to those coordinates and we'll also do a couple of other things. So first of all, we will be checking if it is touching the player. So if it is touching the player, then like I mentioned, we will have to make sure that we set um, the touched variable. So set the touched variable to be yes, because at this point, we have basically touched the player. Um, we can also do one other thing, which is to bump up our score. And to do that, head over to variables once again, and you can see change a uh, score by 50. So 50 works, or uh, you can actually do even 100 or 70 or some other number. This is just what I want to bump the score up with. Um, next, we can get into what happens if the, uh, if the touch variable is yes. Now, if it is yes, remember this is during the animation. Um, just for safety's sake, I'm going to grab an if else and within the else, um, I will have a delete this clone. So within this if, I'll be checking if, uh, if, uh, if y is greater than max y. So if y is greater than max y. So think about this, at the beginning, max y, oops, this is not x plus 79, this is gonna be y plus 79, so make sure I correct that. Uh, but at the starting, right, uh, max y is gonna be much more than y. So this isn't gonna be the case. I mean, this is going to be the case initially. Uh, we actually need to flip this. So this isn't gonna be the, uh, y is immediately not gonna be uh, greater than max y because max y is 79 more than y. But if I change y inside this, by let's just say 10 each time, then eventually y is going to become more than max um, max y as the object moves towards the air. And once that happens, I will simply delete this clone. Now we also want to see that actually happening on the screen. So we obviously need to put a go to coordinates there. And we also need to make sure it fades away. So we can use, uh, you, we can use a change a ghost effect by and here it's going to, um, you know, fade across eight different ticks and 100 is going to be completely transparent. So we can simply, you know, say 100 by eight, which is about 12. So we change it by 12 each tick and this is going to work pretty neatly. Now to test this out, I'm going to head into the player and uh, I'm going to remove this uh, set X2 for a second. And uh, I'm going to set X2 initially, I think 1800 would do. So I have to act pretty fast here. All right, so there are no coins, which I'm not entirely sure. Uh, I'm not entirely sure why that did happen. So I will go through my code once and then I will be right back. Okay, so the reason this happened was fairly simple. I mean, I just forgot to put this block right into the if then. So now when we hit uh, the, now when we start our code, you can see that the blocks uh, go up pretty neatly. Now the reason for this is because I think I set, uh, I didn't really set the touched variable. So initially um, touched is not no but it is going to go through this else statement, right? Because I think by default, the variables are zero. So you can see that, you know, the uh, the coins are going up neatly and you can, you know, avoid focusing on the explosion and just look at the coins and you can see that they fade pretty nicely. So that, that was the whole purpose. So to ensure that the touch variable is set to yes, you can simply, you know, head over to this uh, code right here and you can just say set touch to at the beginning. So set touched to no. And that's going to fix pretty much everything. So now let's hit the green flag and let's jump. Okay, jump fast and boom. You can see that the coin faded pretty neatly and I'm not going to go through that again. So let's head back to our code. Let's remove this uh, change X by and let's set it back to normal. Now, before I end this video, I also want to do a little bit of code, um, a little bit of code uh, within this particular sprite here, which is the finish line. Now the finish line is basically when the game is going to end, but this finish line is not going to be visible. It's going to be invisible, but when we get there, the player is going to neatly animate um, uh, out of the screen, right? So um, to uh, go to this variable end, I'm going to start with once again, or when I receive a init, um, but within this variable, we're not really going to have a bunch of clones. It's just going to be one sprite. So let's make sure we hide the sprite at the beginning 
and let's uh, let's also make sure that we set the ghost effect to 100 so set ghost effect to 100 this um, sprite is 100% transparent and let's set the x and y values so create a new variable called x for the sprite only and create a new variable called y for the sprite only now we can hide x and y um, initially set x to be, you can copy this number down, it's going to be 6950 uh, and you can set y to simply be 0. So set y to 0. Um, there we go. So next we can grab a when I receive a tick, you can duplicate that preferably but I'm going to grab it again. So when we receive tick and here we can simply uh, use that block which we used in other sprites. So that's this go to coordinates block. So drag and uh, drop it for the finish line. Okay, that is turning out to be harder than expected. So I'm gonna switch over to this smaller view and this should be fine. So I'm gonna put it in the finish line. There we go, we have the go to coordinates here. Um, basically, we're gonna use this go to coordinates function uh, for something which we did for all sprites. So grab a minus here. You can say X minus scroll X and you can say Y minus, no, no scroll Y here, so it's just gonna be Y. So X minus scroll X. There we go. This is what we need for the tick. And uh, we also need to make sure that some additional things work out. Uh, I'm not going to go through the entire, you know, finish line in this video. We'll simply be coding the basics of it. Just to test this code out, uh, I will actually remove that set ghost effect too. So set, uh, just put this X and Y right here. Um, let's head back to the player. So that's 6950. Let's set this to be about 6800. So uh, let's duplicate this, keep this at X2. Um, let's change this to 6, uh, let's actually change it to 6900. So now let's press the green flag and you can see that the finish line was right there. So once we pass this finish line, we'll slowly go across in an animation, which I will be doing in the next video. So that's it we'll do right now. If you've enjoyed this video, please make sure you leave a like and also don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.